A 29er with almost five inches of rear wheel travel, the Ibis Ripley has always been sort of the perfect tool for what most of us consider mountain biking to be. Two years ago, we saw Kevin review the LS, that was the long and slack version of the Ripley. A year and a half ago, Brian took out the Gen 3 Ripley, which sort of brought it up to speed with boost, rear spacing, room for wider tires, a couple other things. But since then, Ibis has released a bike that took sort of the world by storm, the Rip Mo. And for their latest iteration of the Ripley, Ibis has sort of turned it into a baby Ripmo, which is a very good thing. Now, I got the opportunity to take out Jeff Kendallweed's very own Ripley, thanks Jeff, for a couple days, a handful of rides. And in that time, I got a pretty good feel for it, I think. I do wanna talk a little bit about the ride qualities, but first I wanna tell you all about what all Ibis has done differently in this brand new Ripley. Starting at the beginning, you'll see a what is a reduced offset Fox 34 fork. They've sort of done this custom with Fox. We will be offering it with all sorts of different reduced offset 29 inch forks. It's currently at a 130 mil option, but Ibis saw a lot of people running 120 mil forks as well as 140 mil forks. So for this model, they fully support that. They've done a couple things differently in that effort. One thing is that with the 120 mil fork previously, it was lowering the bottom bracket too much. People were getting a lot of pedal strikes. So with this version, they've raised the bottom bracket by about half a centimeter. They've also steepened the C-tube angle, which I'll talk a little bit more about here in a moment. That means that with the 140 mil fork, you're not, your weight isn't getting pushed really far back over the rear wheel. So however you want to sort of customize your bike, you can. I rode it with the 130 mil option. That puts the head tube angle at 66 and a half degrees. So with that reduced offset fork, it gives you kind of a nice balance of quick snappy steering, as well as sort of confidence inspiring, kind of locked in feel that the reduced offset fork gives you. Moving back, you'll see the very Ripmo inspired chassis. Along with that, they've pushed the reach out, same as with the Ripmo. On the medium that I'm riding here, I'm 5'10". They brought the reach up from the previous Ripley. It was 411 millimeters. On this one, it's 450, so much more in keeping with a lot of the numbers that you're seeing out on bikes, on medium bikes today. The large is 475, and these increases hold through their whole range of sizes. Continuing back, we'll see that very steep seat tube angle. It is now at 76 degrees with the 130 mil fork. That actually means that, again, throughout the whole range of sizes, you have a similar effective top tube as with the previous Ripley's. Now, obviously, pedaling is very important for Ibis. They want to maximize pedaling comfort and sort of pedaling ride feel. And this gives you a very comfy, fun to pedal bike across the board. Again, with the seat tube, we see quite a few differences between the previous Ripley. It had, that bike had double e eccentric bearings that acted as linkages. On this bike, they've adopted the same linkages that the Ripmo now utilizes. You'll see sort of the stiffer design of the lower link that actually rotates on Igus bushings as opposed to bearings. There's quite a bit of research that Ibis has done that shows that this is in fact quite a good thing and I'm inclined to agree with them. Other companies like Noli have been really big on bushings for a really long time. Durability, longevity, things like that. Another real big advantage is that removing those eccentric bearings actually drops the frame weight. This particular model with the XTR drivetrain, things like their Ibis's carbon hoops, uh, in this case Ibis's carbon bar, this build will come with NV, an NV bar and stem. We're looking at 27 pounds with my big uh, Chromag pedals on here. So you're dropping weight by getting rid of those eccentric bearings. You're also allowing to run a really long dropper post. For example, Roxy Lowe, the designer at Ibis, who is five foot one, is able to run a 150 mil dropper post on her size small Ripley, keeping that really low standover height allows smaller riders to get really long dropper posts 
in their frames and larger riders to run things like 170, 200 mil droppers, which I personally am a huge fan of, particularly in a bike like this that is now designed to go downhill as well as it goes up. Last thing moving back, you'll see this really shapely rear triangle. They've actually tucked this in quite a bit. The old Ripley had a 444, I believe, mil chainstay. This new one has a 432 mil chainstay, so over a centimeter in a tighter rear end, which makes this bike real fun to ride, which is what I want to talk about next. Now, like I said, I've only been able to get out on a handful of rides on this bike, but I do think that's given me a pretty good idea of where it stands, so I'll talk a little about that. I think of bikes like this, sort of in this genre, things like the Evil Following and the Transition Smuggler as sort of trail scalpels. They're really agile, easy to put exactly where you want them on the trail, fun to pedal, and on the right sort of trail, most trails, extremely fast. Now, the Ripley obviously is extremely easy to pedal up the hill. It's very efficient, it's comfy, but we already knew that. That's always been the Ripley's strong point. Where the Gen 4 Ripley really differs is when it comes to descending. Things like the reduced offset fork, the in or slackened head angle, much longer wheelbase now, really have put this bike in sort of a new category of these very capable mid-travel 29ers. And the Ripley sort of checks all those marks. I think a bike like this should be easy to pedal uphill, should be capable when it comes to going downhill due to the geometry, you know, the, the component spec that you've got on there. And most of all, just really fun to ride in almost every setting. Enough travel that you're not going to, it's not going to be cumbersome, but enough that it'll allow you to deal with pretty much any situation that you encounter. Maybe not quite as quickly as a full blown enduro bike, but the rest of the time it's going to be a lot more fun to ride. I think the Ripley checks all those boxes with flying colors. Now I am working on a longer term review of this bike. We'll be putting that on our blog on our website. If you haven't checked that out, please do. It's where we put sort of all of our more in-depth reviews, can get a little more into the nitty gritty. We should have this loaded up into our visual bike builder. If we don't yet, we soon will. So you can build your very own dream Ripley. If you've been watching our dream build videos, you can build your own up and actually see it get built right in front of you. Obviously, if you have any questions about the Ripley, please let us know in the comments below. You can also give us a phone call at 844-326-2845. Shoot us an email at sales at fanaticbike.com. If you like watching these videos, please subscribe to our channel. We really like making them. Thanks for watching.